From LancerRadio.org at Pasadena City College, Dot Cannon Over Coffee presents part two of our Magic Bizarre mix of Majinga Over the Edge with Dot Cannon's Aspects of the Dragon. I had my first professional show was when I was 11 years old. It was at a library, and the librarian had invited me to do the performance. And so my first performance was for about 60 kids in a tiny town called Knoxville, Iowa. I used to compete in sports acrobatics, and later I was in circus. The town had less than 8,000 people in it, and my very first show, my name was in lights at the bank building. That was the big marquee in town, and it said, Magic Show at the library today. And as far as I was concerned, I was a big star. Well, I started longing to be in circus and magic a very long time ago. I was three years old and declared I owned a circus. My grandmother lived in Long Beach, and she had a neighbor that worked for Harry Blackstone, and, and he's now a magic builder in Las Vegas, and he was her neighbor. And through his influence, I got involved in magic just as a little kid, and it's something I just never stopped doing. And so I started making a living at it before I got out of high school, and just had the opportunity to be all over the world and do some TV, and so it's just, that's my life. I do sword walking and a number of other kinds of magic. I have an effect that is a ladder with seven rungs, and in each rung, a sword is placed, and before we place them in the rack on the ladder, we cut cabbages in half with them because they're fairly sharp, and then we put them in the rack, and then I walk up the ladder. But on each rung, I do a figure, so it's sort of like a dance. I had quite a drive, and I had this noisy engine, and the rhythm of the engine, I wrote like four or five songs just by driving and singing along to the engine rhythm. I learned traditional Indian sitar. Playing sitar is one thing, and learning Indian classical music is two different things. If I play sitar, they think I'm doing Indian classical music, but it's totally not true. We, the weavers of the web, spin the threads of the interwoven fabric of life. We release the magical dragons from within. You're listening to the voices of the stars of the Magic Bazaar, San Francisco's longest running magic show and the sound of a creative vision becoming a reality. Leading Bay Area illusion show The Magic Bazaar brought their first full production to Southern California in summer of 2012. After a successful Kickstarter campaign, all systems were go for the show, themed the Year of the Dragon, which incorporated magic from all over the world and the performance date was set for July 14, 2012 at San Pedro's Werner Grand Theater. As that performance date drew near, show preparations intensified. First off, we're doing a Chinese-themed show on Bastille Day. July 14th is Bastille Day. <laughs> but even more interesting to me is our rehearsal is on Friday the 13th. It just kind of thrills me to know that we're doing our dress rehearsal on Friday the 13th. <laughs> and did you check this instrument to see if it works? Okay, no more talking. We're ready to start the show. Rante, do a dynamic segue, okay? As soon as that's done, you just get up and those were the hardest parts, going from one place to the next, you know, how to tie it in with a verbal communication or with a, a sound, a rhythm. We have an amazing band. Fontaine is just an incredible singer. Show co-founder Fontaine Riddle is the Magic Bazaar's musical director, vocalist, lyricist, and composer. We are rehearsing day and night, and it's fun, and it's not so much fun, but at the end it's more fun. <laughs> Fontaine's husband, Farhan Khan, who's also known as Flash, is the Magic Bazaar's groove creator and beat creator. Farhan on sitar, 
incredible. I mean, how many people get a chance to really see somebody play a sitar live? And Majinga is an amazing magician. It's up to him to create the whole visual for the show. And now you lock me up, you look that way, you look that way. Here we go, this is gonna be amazing. One, two, three. One, two, three, I'm free! Eva Houdini! Michael Stroud, or Majinga the Magician, is the show's co-founder and central performer. Thank you. Of course, we need more time than that. Yeah, that routine is seven minutes long. I must mention that Magic Genie's been a very good organizer. She's going to be performing in the show as well, and she's really kept us on track. Jeannie Perry, also known as Magic Genie, has been with the Magic Bazaar for 12 years and is Majinga's partner. Could you please put on the music that's going to be going during the beginning when people are seated, the throne? Tell me about preparation today. What was today like for you? So today we got here at noon, and at noon we started with setting up all of the illusions. So we actually had to put them together. A lot of them break down for transport. We got to meet with the tech people for the first time, the technical director and the two technicians who are doing sound and lights. And then Eli, are we ready after the drone? We have a person coming in who came in all the way from Reno who's gonna be calling the show. That caller was fellow magician Eli Kerr. Well, I met Mike and Jeannie back in, I think, 2003 or 2004 when they came to see my show in Reno and just become friends ever since. We help each other out from time to time when things come up, and so he called me and said, hey, I need you to help me, and so here I am without hesitation. So. I'm sorry, Eli, can you take it from uh, Mark taking the... Uh... Well, this is my first time working in their show, and so it's very cool, but I'm going to be basically kind of stage managing, calling the show from backstage, just kind of make sure everything's going smooth and everything happens when it's supposed to happen. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Let's hear it again for our special guest artist, Marguerite Kusahara. I wanted a snake to work with because I like magic and I also dance and I do children's shows and biology shows, educate kids about different kinds of misunderstood creatures. So I do a lot of different kinds of entertainment and I wanted a snake that would work with me and be good with the public. I love snakes actually and so I love working with them and this one, Angelo, he is such a sweetheart. I was contacted by someone that had one that was going to be destroyed because the owner didn't want it anymore and so I adopted him and he's been with us for 15 years now. He's an albino boa constrictor and he's got beautiful eyes and he's just the mellowest creature you ever wanted to see. I mean, you get up, you, hopefully you can sleep in, but you're a bit excited, so it's almost impossible. Allison Abrams, also known as the alluring Alela, joined the Magic Bazaar two years ago as Majinga's assistant. What I'd like to know, Alela, was what was today like for you? Wow, today was beautifully hectic. I came here and I just started setting everything up for the show, going over and checking and rechecking all the props. Sometimes you don't check them enough times. So it's helping, you know, figure out and plan ahead what was going to happen and smooth out as many bumps as we can before we actually did the run through. You know, surprisingly enough, it, from the outside it looks like this would be a lot to do, too much to do in such a short amount of time, but everyone's professional, everyone knows what they were doing, everyone had their own talents and their own areas and all came together really smooth so far. So yeah, you know, in terms of any challenges really, it's scary that it's been so smooth. What remains to be done these final 24 hours before your show? We are going to be making sure that we go through the set list very carefully and all of the spaces where we had rough spots. I think the personalities around make everything just so fun and lighthearted and I've been on several shows where it's not that way. And then we get in around 2 o'clock. We have to set the stage again. We had to pull all of our props to the side so we'll be setting all of that again, checking our props, rechecking the props and going over the script if we have time to make sure that we really didn't forget anything and then it should be showtime. <laughs> Fontaine.
We're ready to start the show. The day had finally arrived. It was Saturday afternoon, July 14th, 2012, at San Pedro's historic Werner Grand Theater. And this is the sound of San Francisco's longest running magic show, The Magic Bazaar, in final rehearsal for their first full Southern California production, a matter of hours later. Well, no magic performance is complete without a tribute to the great Oh, I should probably have the headset for this instead. A thousand, thousand years ago, the people of the dragon were at war. Since 2012, in the Chinese zodiac, is not just the year of the dragon, but a special one, the year of the water dragon. The show is themed accordingly. It's called the year of the dragon. The show is based on things that magical Chinese theater have to offer. The moon goddess Qi calls upon a cosmic dragon to manifest the energy of Qi in a human being with the power to face change and... and I get in and out and in and out and ha ha! Viva! Houdini, I'm free! Let's have another big hand for the comedy team of Joe and his brother. We need a minute. What goes through your mind when you're on the stage and you're swallowing swords or you're swallowing fire and you're changing cards? I'm hoping people like it because when you eat fire, it turns out it hurts a little bit. You and Flash are performing music as Majinga is doing all kinds of incredible stuff. What's going through your mind? Uh, was that the cue? <laughs> uh, uh, was, did he just... Is he out of cards? No, wait. Okay. The end of the song. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> what goes through my mind, you know, it's kind of like being in any theater production. You're trying to think one step ahead, one step ahead. What's next? What do I have to do next? What do I have to do next? <laughs> what goes through your mind when we're less than two hours prior to Kurt? Everything. All at the same time, so it's very confusing. But <laughs> you just kind of have to trust what you know, and, and for everybody, really. If you'd really try to sit down and think about what's happening next, you, you can't even think about it. It's like there's so much going on in your head, but once the music starts, everything just kind of flows together. So, What's going through my mind, all my... It's the technical stuff, so if I have all the specs and all the, you know, the levels and all the technical aspects are in their place, so... And just have fun, you know? And, it's a live show, so you know, we cannot go back and fix it. So. <laughs> What's going through your mind right now, just before a curtain? Get everything organized, get it ready, get it ready for the people, get it so that it's working, so that it's set up, and so that I can get ready to do it and be on. Okay, that's the most important thing is to get everything together and set. Honestly, I'm a very religious person. I just start praying to myself that everything goes well and that everyone has a wonderful, joyous experience. The time just after 8 o'clock, Saturday evening, July 14th, 2012. The place, San Pedro's historic Art Deco Warner Grand Theater. The occasion, San Francisco's premier magic show, The Magic Bazaar, was in town for a one-night special performance, their first full Southern California production. <laughs>
completely through his neck. My favorite thing, and it's just like the kid in me, it's the sword through the neck. <laughs> it's my favorite one. Here we go. All the way down through his neck. <laughs> The name of the song was Sanguo. Sanguo means three kingdoms. It talks about a hush falling over a battlefield at the end of a battle. So it's kind of longing for glory, but also aware of the price that glory brings. While we were in China, this wonderful land of arts and culture, dating back hundreds of years, we discovered an art form steeped in magic. The famous Binlin, face changing. When I started practicing mask changing magic, I swore to my Sifu that I wouldn't perform it in public for at least four years, which meant I had to practice it every day for four years before I got to show it. You have to see it to believe it. He magically changes his mask within a split second. You can't even tell. He gets up really close and, and you can't see how it happens because it happens so fast. I'll be singing a little bit in Urdu, which is my husband's language. He's from Pakistan. We are doing all the music for the whole show. The music we are doing is kind of non-traditional. There have been many famous Chinese magicians throughout history. Okito was a wonderful inventor, and we are blessed to present for you now the screen. The sword basket, a snake appears. Nine foot long boa constrictor named Angelo. Very, very sweet. Very, I'm still a little intimidated, but it's awe inspiring to work with such a powerful animal. Magic and music we have. That was the grand finale. I hope you enjoyed the show. And after that grand finale, the mood was celebratory. Can you hear me? You got me. Even if the first balloon popping did startle people a little bit. But then the audience got into it. What do you think of the show? Excellent, excellent. It's a wonderful show. Musical is fantastic. It was amazing, and I love the variety. You're the Dragon is awesome. And the magician was extraordinary. The mask thing was pretty awesome. I like the trick with the snake. Laura wasn't looking, but I was. Everything was funny, too. I dig the music, the dance. The basket, when there was a person at the bottom. The cards were a lot of fun how they kept coming and coming and coming. It was just exciting. Then, it was time to check in with some of the Year of the Dragon performers. Okay, Fontaine, what was your absolute best moment on stage tonight? Trying to get everyone to sing in Urdu. Farhan, what was your best moment on stage tonight? All the moment, actually. I, I enjoyed it from, I cannot even keep track of time. I'm so quick. Everything. <laughs> Everything. My favorite moment for me on stage, although I love working with Angelo, was singing the traditional ancient Mandarin song in Chinese and it was a perfect venue and perfect occasion to sing the song. And I actually do like to sit and watch everyone else perform. As fun as performing is, I really like hitting that cymbal and ka -choo, ka -choo, ta da <laughs> It's really fun. I have to say I love the opening. 
of any show. The moment that the curtain rises or the music starts is just one of the most magical moments in show business. Well, we don't really see the audience because we're so busy backstage preparing. So when those curtains first open and we can see three or four hundred people, whatever it was in the audience tonight, we're all expectant. You know, what are they going to see? And we get to finally see the fruits of our labors in six months planning. That is a very magical moment for me. So, final curtain, happy audience, that's it. The cast of the Magic Bazaar can go out and celebrate their successful Year of the Dragon performance, right? Well, not exactly, Majingo says. I think there's a great illusion to theater, and a lot of people think the show starts and they see it and then we're done. But for us, the show started at the dress rehearsal yesterday. From yesterday till two hours from now, it's work, 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 work without a moment's break. I didn't even get to eat anything today or even drink anything. I was a little ill-prepared, so I'm very thirsty right now, and I still have two hours of loadout ahead of me. So this is still kind of part of the show, but the very last finishing line in the lobby, meeting some of the people and just making sure everybody gets a moment and has a smile on their face when they leave, that's the end of the show for them, and that's a very special part for me, too. The Year of the Dragon 2012 show. A new chapter in the Magic Bazaar's experience and one that may very well have a number of Southern California sequels. This is Dot Cannon for Lancer Radio.